Hello everyone, welcome back to Vaishaya's YouTube channel and welcome to the series of Art and Culture. So in this video we will be discussing regarding two uh, topics. They are um, Indian Circus and we will also uh, discuss about the UNESCO's intangible uh, list. So let's get into the topic. So before that if you are new to this channel please do subscribe to Vaishaya's channel and uh, check out all the playlists which are specially made for the UPSC aspirants. So... Let's have a look on the uh, Indian circus. See, um, India has a long tradition of uh, street performers and artists uh, who uh, used to perform from town to town. So, according to Philip um, Astley, an English uh, circus master, the first Indian uh, circus was born uh, in 1880. Now let's see about the great Indian circus. See this great Indian circus was the first modern circus uh, of India that was founded by Vishnu Panchatre. So uh, this um, uh, circus was flourished under the patronage of Raja of Kurwadi under whom Chatre worked as a stable master. So the first performance of the uh, great Indian circus was held on March uh, 2018 80. And uh, Chatre, he gained his uh, appreciation everywhere. Uh, but uh, when he went to uh, his tour to North America, he was uh, unable to compete with those um, uh, who are in North America. So now let's see about uh, Kileri Kunikanan. See, when uh, Vishnupan Chatre, uh, he came back to um, India from North America, he met Kileri Kunikanan. Uh, in the uh, in his tour in the city of Telicheri on the Malabar coast, which is in Kerala, so Kileri Kunikannan he worked as a martial artist as well as a gymnastic teacher. So he started a training acrobat at his academy on the insistence of uh, Chatre, and in 1901 um, Kileri he opened a circus uh, school at Chirakkara near uh, Telicheri, and this uh, became the epicenter of circus revolution in India. See, in 1904, uh, Kunikannan student uh, Pariyali Kannan, he started his own circus company by the name Grand Malabar uh, Circus. And other companies such as White Way uh, Circus, Great Ramayan Circus, the Great Lion Circus, the Eastern Circus, the Fairy Circus, all those uh, circus were started by Kileri Kunikannan's uh, student. So, um, uh, the uh, Kerala came to be known as the cradle of Indian circus. See, Kileri Kunikannan he is considered as the father of uh, Kerala circus and Vishnu Chatre he is uh, considered as the father of Indian circus. So, Kunikannan's academy uh, gave rise to number of acrobat who gained international as well as um, national acclaim. And uh, Kuni, after the death of Kunikarnan in 1939, his student M.K. Raman, he continued his legacy. So, in 2010, the government of uh, Kerala, they started a circus academy in Talasheri to honor Mr. Kileri Kunikarnan. So, as, so as I said, uh, Kileri Kunikarnan is considered as the father of um, Kerala circus. So, it is wrongly mentioned as Indian circus. So, father of Indian circus is Vishnupan Chatre and father of Kerala circus is Kileri Kunikanana. Now, let's see about some of the major uh, circus company in India. See, um, even though so, the circus company in India were uh, unable to compete with those of that European and American competitors, they remind that is the circus in India, they remind an entertainment for all uh, Indians till uh, 1990s. Now let's see some of the major circus companies. The first one is Three Ring Circus. C.K. Uh, Damodaran, he started uh, the circus as a two-pole circus in 1930s. And it gained popularity in uh, the southern India. And later, um, it became the first and only six-pole uh, Three Ring Circus of Asia. The next uh, circus company is the Great Royal Circus uh, Company. See, it is the oldest circus company in India that was uh, started by Madhushakar uh, in 1909. So, later it was taken over by N.R. Valavalkar and it was uh, named as a Great Royal Circus. And then the Great Bombay Circus. Uh, see, this Great Bombay Circus was started um, in 1920 by Baburao Khadan. And it was uh, initially known as Grand Bombay Circus. 
but in 1947 mr uh, akm kunikannan who is the nephew of kaleri kunikannan he merged this company with the grand bombay circus and he uh, renamed it as great bombay circus so this com- uh, circus company is one of the largest one as it con- uh, consists of 300 performers and 60 animals the next one is gemini circus see uh, this gemini circus came into existence at uh, bilimora in gujarat in 1951 so it was helmed by mr um, mv shankaran he uh, who is an ex army man and uh, shankaran is also a master at aerialist and acrobat and he uh, is popularly na- uh, known as gemini shankaran so in 1964 uh, gemini uh, circus became the first indian circus uh, to attend the international circus festival in um, ussr and uh, in this gemini uh, circus uh, this became the backdrop of many indian movies like uh, raj kapoor's mera naam choker uh, for such a movie this became the backdrop and the next uh, circus company is the jumbo circus see the jumbo circus it is uh, the pride of india because it is the india's largest circus of modern times so it was started in uh, 1977 and it was later, later acquired by the shankaran family and uh, this jumbo circus uh, included russian acrobats and performers now let's see about uh, the circus as a, ma- a marginal industry see uh, since uh, the late 90s the circus started uh, declining due to several reasons so the first reason is th- this indian circus company they were um, something uh, guarded a secret that is uh, they this are made as a hereditary affair uh, keeping within the confines of the selective uh, few so uh, because of this hereditary affair this prevented good manager from entering into the circus uh, business and the next uh, reason for the decline of circus industry is uh, the indian supreme court has banned the uh, on hiring children below the age of 14 in 2011 so in circus um, they uh, believe that uh, acrobatic required intensive training from childhood so because of this uh, ban on ch- um, hiring the children below 14 in 2011 is also a main reason for the decline of this uh, circus companies and uh, the government uh, in 1997 it also banned uh, the use of wild animals for the purpose of entertainment and um, the other reason is the indian uh, masses they uh, generally consider the circus as a dangerous profession so families were unwilling to send their children to see, uh, choose this profession as their career so this is also the main reason for the um, uh, decline of this uh, circus company now let's see some of the possible remedies um, for the revival of the circus company see uh, the first remedy can be uh, like uh, increasing emphasis on the safety regulations and uh, government can um, give protection for the circus performance see uh, those circus performers uh, they retire at the age of 40 and after that they have to go uh, for uh, manual work so security and compensation for them is necessary and uh, presently the circus is under the ambit of department of sports and youth affairs so if they bring it under the ministry of culture uh, it would help in better strategizing for its uh, revival and uh, it would also be an acknowledgement of circus as an art form so these are the possible remedies to bring the uh, circus company uh, to be revival so with this we have uh, come to the end uh, regarding the indian circus i hope you have uh, understood now let's see about uh, unesco's list of intangible cultural heritage so the term uh, cultural heritage uh, it has been changing uh, from decades so um, the uh, it includes that is the cultural uh, heritage includes the traditions or living expressions that inherited from our ancestors and passed to the um, other generation so um, the intangible uh, heritage can be said as the oral traditions uh, performing arts uh, social practice 
See, UNESCO has established this list of intangible cultural heritage. The main aim of uh, establishing this is list is to protect uh, the uh, intangible cultural heritage worldwide and to create awareness um, uh, about their uh, significance. So, now let's see the representative uh, list of um, intangible cultural heritage of uh, humanity so india has 10 intangibles uh, in the representative list of intangible cultural heritage of humanity the first one is kudi atom uh, this is a sanskrit theater that was included to this list in 2008 so uh, this kudi atom it is a dance drama that was conducted by chakiyas that is a sub um, cast among the hindus uh, they play the male cast uh, uh, traditionally in the state of um, Kerala and the women of the Nambiar cast they play the female roles so the performance uh, lasts for uh, 6 to 20 days and the main theme of this uh, performance is the Hindu mythology that is generally performed in the Hindu temples and the character Vidushaka in this Kudi Atam he explains the uh, simple um, explains the story uh, that is background of story in simple Malayalam to understand uh, for the understanding of this audience and other characters uh, who are performing in this Kodi Atam, they use uh, Sanskrit language and Milavu, it is an important musical instrument which is used in this performance. And the next one is uh, Ram Leela, which is included in 2008. See, this Ram Leela, it is a popular folk theatre uh, which belongs to the region of Uttar Pradesh and uh, it is an enactment of Ramayana uh, using songs, dance and dialogues mainly during the period before uh, Dashra. So, Ram Leela, it is performed by male actors uh, who do not uh, do the role of uh, Sita as well. So, the play is staged annually over 10 or more successive nights during the specious period of uh, Sharat Navratras. And the unique thing of this uh, Ram Leela is it is staged since uh, 1972 at uh, uh, Bakshika Talab near uh, Lucknow. And the lead characters like Rama, uh, Lakshmanan and Hanumans were performed by the Muslim youths. So, this prom to promote the uh, communal harmony among the masses. The next one is tradition of Vedic chanting that is included into this representative list in 2008. See, the oral tradition of Vedas uh, consists of... Um, uh, several pathas uh, or uh, recitations or uh, way of chanting Vedic mantras. So this uh, tradition is considered as the oldest unbroken oral tradition that has been still in existence. And UNESCO uh, proclaimed the tradition of Vedic chanting as a masterpiece of oral and intangible heritage of humanity. The next one is Raman. See, uh, Raman is uh, included to this representative list in 2009. See, uh, a religious festival and the ritual theater of Garval region, um, this Raman, it is celebrated by the Hindu community uh, in the um, Chamoli district of uh, Uttakanda. So, the villagers, they pay uh, uh, off offerings to their um, village deity Bhumi Al Devta uh, in the courtyard of the village temple. See, uh, the unique uh, thing of this festival is uh, it is performed, uh, it is not performed anywhere in this uh, Himalayan region. So, the particular caste or the group um, in that village, they host the Bhumiyal uh, Devta during the particular year. And each caste um, and occupational group, they uh, perform a different uh, fest um, uh, role in this uh, festival. And an important aspect uh, of this Raman festival is the singing of Jagar, uh, a musical redemption of local legends. The next one is Mudietu. See this Mudietu, it is included in 2010. Uh, it is a ritual theater and it is performed, uh, it is a folk uh, drama and dance that is performed in the state of Kerala. So, um, this Mudietu, it depicts the mythological tale of battle between goddess Kali and demon Darika. And the dance is performed uh, in the village uh, called Bhagavati Kaus in the month of February and May after the harvesting season. So the uh, performers in this Mudietu, they wear gorgeous attire with uh, conventional facial paintings, uh, tall headgear, etc. Uh, to uh, bring that uh, supernatural feel. So the mutual cooperation and collective participation of each caste in this uh, ritual, that strengthens the common identity and bonding. 
द नेक्स्ट वन इज कलबेला कलबीलिया इट इज इंक्लूडेड इन टू थाउजेंड टेन सी दिस कलबीलिया इट इज पर्फॉर्मड बई ट्राइब कॉल्ड कलबीलिया Uh, in the state of Rajasthan, so Kalbilia um, dance uh, movements they resembles that of serpents. So the traditionally uh, this Kalbilia tribe they uh, were uh, known for their frequent movement from one place to another for the occupation of uh, catching the snakes and the trading the snake venom. So the songs uh, in this Kalbilia uh, are based on the mythology and it involves the composing uh, lyrics uh, spontaneously and improving songs during performance the next one is chow which is included into this representative list in 2010 see uh, it is a tribal martial dance performance that was performed uh, in the states of odisha jharkhand and west bengal so there are three uh, sub category in this chow based on their das dance performance that uh, where it uh, take place for example see if this uh, dance of chow is having the origin in west bengal it is called uh, purulia chow and in jharkhand it is sharaikela chow and in odisha it is maurbanj chow so the dance is mainly performed in spring uh, festival and uh, last for 13 days so the whole community uh, participate in this uh, performance uh, and uh, the dance is performed by the uh, male dancer during the night time at a open space so the theme of chow dance is based on hindu mythology and mask is owned by the dancers during performance except the mayurban chow which is performed in odisha now let's uh, see about the buddhist chanting of ladakh which is included in 2012 in this representative list of intangible uh, cultural heritage Uh, so it refers to the recitation of sacred buddhist text in the uh, trans himalayan ladakh region in the state of uh, jammu and kashmir and uh, sankirtana which is included in 2013 uh, it is a ritual singing drumming and dancing art form of manipur see uh, this art form is performed uh, to mark religious occasions and various uh, stages in the life of uh, manipuri vaishnavites so it is practiced at temple and the performance they narrate the life of, of lord krishna through songs and dance the next one is traditional brass and um, uh, copper craft of utensils making among the tatteras of jandiala guru in punjab which is included in 2014 see this is a oral tradition so that is passed from one generation of the tatera community to the other of that same community so the metals are uh, heated and molded into a thin plates with uh, curved shapes and the utensils have functions uh, as well as the ritualistic purpose so metals are used to, uh, metals uh, uh, used for making such uh, utensils were brass copper and kansa see so this kansa it is an uh, uh, alloy of zinc tin and copper so Uh, most of them are recommended for the medicinal purpose in several ayurveda text and uh, this was patronized by the maharaja um, uh, ranjit singh in 19th century and the um, utensils were mainly used for the household and community kitchens and now uh, oh, let's see about the navros which is included in 2016 see uh, navros uh, it uh, indicates the beginning of new year for the parsis and it is also celebrated as a spring festival for the uh, kashmiri community so it denotes the sorastrian respect for the uh, environment so in this festival uh, there is a custom is that uh, to lay down a table and place uh, the copy of gathas um, a lit of lamb or a candle and put a shallow ceramic plate with the sprouted wheats uh, or beans and small bowl with silver coins flowers um, a uh, painted eggs sweets and a bowl with a golden fish so all those things that uh, denotes or signifies their prosperity wealth uh, color uh, sweetness and happiness and then uh, let's see about the yoga that is included to this representative list in 2016 see um, this um, yoga it consists of series of poses meditations uh, controlled breathing word chanting and other techniques to help a person build self realization so it is uh, transmitted through that is yoga is transmitted through guru shishya parampara and then uh, the kumbha mela this kumbha mela it is uh, included in this list in 2017 
See, uh, Kumbh Mela is a mass Hindu uh, pilgrimage to bath in a sacred river. So, uh, this bath can be uh, done in four places. That is in Prayagraj, Haridwar, uh, Nasik and Ujjain. So, um, in this uh, four places, that is in uh, Prayagraj, Haridwar, Nasik and Ujjain, it is held uh, after every 12 years. So, in Nasik and Ujjain, uh, it is called as Simhasta. So, this is all about Kumbha Mela that was included in 2017. So, um, with this we have come to the end of uh, today's session. So, in this video we have discussed about the Indian Circus and UNESCO's uh, uh, list of intangible cultural heritage. So, I hope you have enjoyed this video and you are at most clear with this um, topics. So, we will meet on the next session. Until then, take care. Bye.